I'm here with Samir Patel, founder of Do Revolution and a mentor for 500 startups. First of all, thank you for being here, Samir. Thank you. And my first question is, what are your impressions about the Brazilian ecosystem? I, I, I really love the energy here and people want to learn, people want to do better. I think so far from what I have seen is, um, you know, be, because there were tough times in getting money in the last few years, yeah. entrepreneurs have become even more resilient, even more focused and I guess the good entrepreneurs have survived and the bad ones are gone or have gotten jobs. Yeah. So I have a very positive, because um, some, some of the companies we are working with, um, runrun.it yeah. and a couple of other companies for different VC firms, yeah. they are really, really smart and because we have access to some of their data, so we know, you know how well they are optimizing their growth. Okay. It's really can, good. Can you explain for the audience a little, uh, what is growth hacking? Yeah, I mean, I think growth hacking is uh, rather than a separate technique, it's more, or a strategy, it's more of a mindset. It's like, how can I do things, you know, cheaper, faster, bigger, right, without much resource, right? So can I use automation, you know, programming, statistics, can I use um, some idea that will get everybody talking about me, right? So it's more of a mindset where uh, the, the, main, the main idea in your mind is how do I get this into more hands, right? Like, and more people knowing about it. And uh, you can get there by different ways, but, but the idea is uh, a very, um, I guess a very adventurous and creative uh, mindset, yeah. but also being very analytical about it. Have you, have you ever seen a bad company or product using and having success with growth hacking? Yeah, I think uh, there may be some products, but I think the uh, idea is to you know, create a really good product that actually wins the trust of customers and works for the longer term. Um, because the, a bad product might work for a shorter term, yeah. maybe um, you, you got people to start using it. But can but, sustain but that. Yeah, yeah, because can sustain, because there's so many distractions and new products coming all the time. Yeah. So you will lose it if, you, if, if the company doesn't really um, focus on high quality and you know, caring about their customers. Okay. And we talk a lot about growth hacking on startups. But have you ever seen uh, growth hacking being used on traditional companies, uh, on their marketing departments? That's a really good question because now I'm learning while I'm here, I'm learning that some of the biggest software companies and the biggest companies in Brazil are facing a problem with launching their new products yeah. now, right? So they have, a, they have a process, a sales process, a marketing process, everything for, you know, and they're giants in their own world. But now with this new world, right, where I was showing that slide, there's 100 million people available now on Twitter, Pinterest, I mean, WhatsApp. I mean, it's a completely different world than they were yeah. like 10, 15 years ago. So they're seeing a challenge in new product launches. So they're like, their existing channels are not working. Uh, so they're new products. So they're having problems with their newer products. And I feel like they have to learn, right? Like, I mean, you know, we have gotten requests from Microsoft in the Valley to come and train their teams in growth hacking in different divisions. So yeah, so it's hard because it's also a mindset yeah. and it's also a tool set, it's yeah. both. And I think they have no idea, the bigger companies have no idea how these startups are growing. So you can see the, there's a big margin, uh, there's a big growth curve for smaller companies and faster and the older companies are like kind of tapering out. Yeah. You, you or they're buying new companies. Yeah. You said that you started being entrepreneur as a kid back then. Can you tell a little about, about it, a little more about this? Yeah, yeah. I actually uh, bought my first bicycle back in India. Bought, yeah, in India when I was like eight or nine years old, and uh, I bought my I, I paid through paid my way through school with running businesses. So I was like yeah, eight to ten years old, and I was running this. Uh, library so I used to take books to uh, to school and all my classmates were customers yeah. so they would pay a monthly recurring fee yeah. and they can borrow two or four books at a time That's so great. I've been doing and I used to buy old books from 
know, like junk or other, and then kind of That's so, right. yeah, rent it out. So I've been doing business for a long, long time yeah. in different forms. I think some entrepreneurs are born, and uh, I, I I think so. I, yeah. I'm definitely that way. I, I cannot work for a huge company yeah. or a big company. Um, I feel like my heart will die, like my creativity will die, because I'm only doing one thing all day. Like I want to be doing new things and yeah. learning new things and, and discovering things all the time. Although it's much, it's very risky yeah. to do sure. that. Sure. But but I think the biggest risk is not living your life with passion. Yeah. So people say, oh, it's a big risk working for a startup. But the the risk is more like you're dying yeah. and you're not living your life. That's yeah. also a big risk. So. Even if it's a failure, but you're living what you believe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from Silicon Valley, I've learned like there's nothing like failure. There's just movement, right? Yeah. Like you're learning, you know. Because I have, I have a couple of failed projects and one failed startup, right? One failed startup myself. But I am learning. Uh, I am using that learning in everything that I do right now. So you don't really know how to label a failure because it could be a stepping stone. It is a stepping stone to future success. I wouldn't be here if. I wasn't failing. Earlier. I think this is the culture that we must bring to Brazil because here, a failure is a loser, you know. Oh, and yeah. And I think we must yeah. change here also. Yeah, yeah, and I think like like I think people have to understand that when you don't do something or try something, you've already failed, right? Yeah. And failure is a label given by society. Let's say, let's say I fail in three companies. Yeah. Okay. But this and temporary. I, let's say yeah, and I lose a hundred million dollars. But in the fourth company, I become a billionaire. So, like, am I a failure or a success? The balance is positive. Right. Like, you don't... Because people will change their mind as soon as you become popular. Yeah. So, I think it's just a label made to put you down. It's just a mental construct. Like, yeah. it's some word. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Like, in, in, in Silicon Valley, failure is called... Stepping stones. Yeah. So that's great. So Samir, thank you for being Brazil. Enjoy your visit. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Appreciate it.